Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm a Master's of Science student at the University of British Columbia. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the focus of my research, knee osteoarthritis. What causes it, how to help prevent it, and what you can do once you have it. Normally, the knee has a layer of cartilage between the tibia in your lower leg and the femur of the upper leg. This helps cushion the impact between the two bones, when you're walking or jumping. Over time, the cartilage wears down. This means less cushion in your knee and more impact you feel. Except, as the cartilage wears down, you feel the impact is pain. Now what do most people do when something hurts them? They stop doing it. Although this may seem logical, when you stop doing an activity, your body becomes unadapted or untrained to do it. I'll explain what I mean. Let's say your friend here has been lifting weights and is now really strong, but suddenly they stop. What would happen to their muscles? At first, they wouldn't notice anything. They might even feel better because they're no longer working out so hard. But what about after a month or a year of not doing weights? Since they're no longer using those muscles, those muscles are going to shrink and get weaker. What does this have to do with knee osteoarthritis? Well, when you stop doing an activity, like taking the stairs or going for walks each day because your knee is hurting, your body starts losing the muscle it needed to do those activities, just like the former weightlifter. Of course, it might hurt less at first, but soon other less intense activities will start making it hurt. The reason for this is that your muscles actually help take some of the load off of your knee joint. They help reduce that impact. To figure out what causes this condition, we can think about things that might wear down the cartilage things that might cause extra stress on the knee. We usually call these things risk factors, because they don't guarantee that you'll develop osteoarthritis, but they certainly put you at greater risk for it. Some risk factors are occupational tasks, like kneeling, carrying heavy objects, or standing constantly. Another is obesity. Carrying around extra weight can take a toll on the knees, but instead of doing it just at your job, you're doing it all the time. Another risk factor is injuring your knee, such as an ACL tear. Most interestingly though, it is that weak muscles, especially in the thigh and hip region, contribute to the development of knee osteoarthritis. What can you do to modify these, to reduce your risk of osteoarthritis? You could change how you work. You could shed a few pounds. Or if you had a knee injury, make sure you get proper rehabilitation. And lastly, exercise. Weak muscles are only fixed by using them. This last point goes for whether you are concerned about developing osteoarthritis or if you already have it. Looking at the research, we see that exercise has been repeatedly shown to be as effective or more effective than many common pain medications at reducing knee pain in the long run. Plus, exercise has been shown to increase physical function, allowing people to do more of what they enjoy doing. But what sort of exercise is best? Here's what the research has to say. Strength training of any sort can improve pain and physical function. Aerobic exercise, like walking, can reduce pain and increase function. And it can reduce body weight. Hydrotherapy, or exercising in the pool, can be beneficial, especially in the beginning of an exercise program, or if you have severe osteoarthritis, as the impact to the knee is lessened because of the water. Tai Chi also shows some favorable results in terms of physical function and quality of life. What does this all amount to? Basically, most types of exercise appear to be effective at reducing pain and increasing physical function. But what about diet? Those who exercise and are on a diet with the goal of losing weight see even greater changes compared to those who just exercise or use diet alone. As a master's student, I am interested in conservative strategies for improving pain and function in those with knee osteoarthritis. Like exercise and diet, these are strategies that do not require surgery or drugs. My work looks at whether changing how you walk will improve pain. Specifically, whether we can do this by teaching someone to walk with their feet turned out slightly. Research has found that a larger proportion of impact when walking is focused on the inside part of the knee joint. 
This is consistent with what we see in the real world, since most people have pain from their knee osteoarthritis on the inside of the knee. By teaching someone to walk with their feet pointed out, it is believed that less of the impact will go through the inside part of the knee, and they will experience less pain. In my lab, a randomized controlled trial over several months is currently looking to see how effective this treatment is at reducing pain when compared to a traditionally prescribed walking program. Another conservative treatment that tries to reduce the impact to the inside part of the knee is the use of shoe insoles with a lateral wedge. This type of insole is higher on the outside and lower on the inside. A randomized controlled trial is currently looking to ensure that lateral wedge insoles are as safe as possible for people with knee osteoarthritis by comparing a couple of different designs. With all this new information, what can you do? Grab a friend and start walking? Take the stairs? Or go to an exercise class? Talk to your physiotherapist or trainer to see what they recommend. Whatever activity you do, as long as you do it consistently, your muscles and joints will thank you. So whether you're trying to delay knee osteoarthritis or trying to alleviate your symptoms, don't be a couch potato. Get out there and be active.